Well, thanks everyone for watching my Photoshop tutorial and those that subscribed and left comments. This time I'll show you how to make a star field uh, by request from Pips Hens DK. I mostly follow an online tutorial by Greg Martin with some differences, uh, and the link to the original is provided in the info. So go ahead and create a new one. I will do 500 by 500 like usual, just for the sake of this tutorial. You can go larger, but it may be tedious. I fill in the background with black, create a new layer, and fill it with black as well. Now the reason I do this is because we're going to be creating noise on layer one, and we're going to be erasing. So we don't want to be erasing into transparency. We have, want to have a black background. Now, in layer one, go to filter, noise, add noise. Make sure you use Gaussian monochromatic. If it's not monochromatic, you have these nice, interesting colors that aren't going to work. So keep it monochromatic. 10% is the key number here. OK. Go to your adjustments and brightness contrast. I'm going to increase my contrast up to 100% and increase my brightness to about 70. Do this one more time. Contrast 100, brightness, I'll say 50 this time. That's good. These are going to be your small stars. Duplicate this layer, and I'm going to call this large stars. Now with large stars, we want to isolate some of the brighter ones and get rid of all the dull ones. So we're going to use, again, the brightness contrast levels. This time, increase your brightness, uh, increase your contrast, sorry, and lower your brightness levels to around uh, 60 is good, negative 60. Okay. And now we have some of these. Zoom out a little. I'm holding down the option or the Alt key to uh, change my magnifying glass. I'm hitting Control T to transform and holding Shift and Option at the same time to constrain the proportions. I am increasing the size of the cam, uh, the size of the image by 200 percent. Accept the changes. I'm inverting using Control I or Command I. Then I'm bringing up the levels. You can say adjustments, levels, or use Control or Command L. Here are the magic numbers. 230 Keep that as 1 and change this to 250. Invert it again. And using your transform tool, holding shift and option or alt, shrink it back down just slightly larger than the canvas. Accept the changes. Now change this to screen, and you'll notice we have a nice 1980s time warp effect. To get rid of that, Rotate the canvas by 180 degrees. Now what I'm doing is I'm holding down the shift to make sure that I keep all the lines straight. Okay. And we have this. Now, you want to use your eraser to maliciously get rid of uh, any anything that you don't really want. Make sure your hardness is at 100%. You can use any size you want. Just don't go smaller than 10. And I'm going to use 100% flow for the beginning. Erase some of the larger stars and make sure you get rid of some of the smaller ones, just erasing it separately. I'm going to change the flow back down to 30% just to create some variation and get rid of just some bits to make some ever faint stars. Like so. Now, Merge the layers. I'm using Control or Command E into one layer. I'm making the stars. Using your clone tool, and Option is the uh, shortcut key for this. Click with while holding Option to create your target, and then you can just paint some more like this, and just keep changing it around. I'm going to go ahead and go into fast forward. It's going to look pretty random of what I'm doing, and you're right, I am doing this pretty pretty much at random. Um, just try to make something that looks realistic. It has to evolve. Keep in mind of what real stars look like, these clusters and some dimmer points and even some black.
Alright, looks good enough to me. Duplicate this layer. We're going to call this Glow. Go to your filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. Crank it up. 8 is a good number. I'm just going to increase the brightness just a tad to make the effect worthwhile. I used 40. Now, Control B or Command B brings up your color balance. I'm going to use blue, uh, this blue haze, just because it's a nice classic color and you can never go wrong with something that's textbook like that. Change the uh, change it to screen and look what you have. Pretty cool, huh? We're not done yet. Duplicate the stars one more time. And we'll call this uh, large glow. Bring it up to the top. Use your Gaussian blur one more time, but this time make it a little tighter. I'm going to say 3. Let's go. Bring up your color balance, and this time I'm going to I'm going to use more of a cyan uh, than anything, uh, just to bring out some more of the highlights. Oops, too much. There we go. Also change that to screen. Now, if you notice. It just uh, makes the clusters look a little bit more brighter and a little more realistic, in my opinion. Uh, you can change the uh, hues to anything that you want. And uh, from here, you can add nebula or stars. I'll show you how to make a, a rendered star. Uh, just quickly, add one more layer, fill it with black, go to your filter, render, lens flare. It's pretty good. I just use 50 to uh, the 50 to 300 millimeter zoom, 100% brightness. Okay. And then change that to linear dodge. Ta da! Bright star. And you can use your color balances to change any changes to any color that you want it to be as well. And that's how you make a star field.